Whenever we talk about the macro view of marketing, we have to look at it from three different approaches. The first one is this institutional approach, followed by the functional approach, or then the behavioral systems approach. But whenever we start talking about the institutional approach, I want you to remember one word. I want you to remember who. Who are these institutions that are involved in the forward flow of goods and services from the consumer to the producer? Who is involved? Some examples of who might be involved might be the middlemen or the processors, governmental agencies or organized systems of behavior. The middlemen, we've all often heard of the middleman, those people that are kind of in the middle of the production chain of this marketing channel. These middlemen are often considered retailers, wholesalers, might be brokers, commission agents, order buyers, for example. The middleman is nothing more than somebody in between the farmer and the consumer. And we also have the processors. Those are the, those that are involved in taking that raw agricultural good and turning it into a usable, consumable good for the final good, for the, for the final consumer. We have the governmental agencies. These governmental agencies often play a key role when it comes to gaining market information and also developing regulations and standardization. Then we also have these organized systems of behavior. The organized systems of behavior are often groups such as organized markets, co-ops. You often heard of co-ops. Just about every small town is going to have their own farmer's co-op. Those co-ops are an organized system of behavior. Uh, you also have joint ventures, alliances, things of that nature are often these organized systems of behavior. And that kind of lets us look at the whys of marketing. Why is this one particular group promoting this particular aspect? It might be, say, the a uh, corn producers board or something of that nature, a corn producers board, and they might be trying to market their product in a certain way. And that kind of allows us to look at the whys of marketing. Why are they doing things in a certain way? And it often we often look at these organized systems behavior whenever we're looking at the whys of marketing. The next approach is this functional approach. It looks at what needs to be done or what is being done in the marketing channel. It doesn't really look at who is doing it, but it rather looks at what is being done. So whenever you think about the institutional approach, I want you to think about who. As you think about the functional approach, I want you to think about what. So as we look at the functional approach, we break it down into three main categories, typically. Those three categories are exchange, physical, and then facilitating functions. Within the exchange functions, we have buying and selling, or procurement, and marketing. So, as we look at the exchange functions, we have those two. Under the physical functions, these are something that is tangible. Those physical functions are often included as storage, processing, and transportation. Then under the facilitating functions, we have financial functions, taking a loan out of the bank, risk bearing, that's your insurance aspect, standardization, such as making sure that all the commodities in a, of a certain quality, all grade the same way. Intellectual property and then market intelligence, intelligence gathering. Those are all aspects of what is done in the marketing channel. So, just about all, everything falls into one of those categories. And it kind of cuts out the middleman. Whenever we look at what is being done, it allows us to cut out the middleman and say, what needs to be done? What if we cut out, for example, this wholesaler? If we cut out wholesalers altogether, one of the middlemen, what do we need to do to get our products to the retailers straight from the processors? And it kind of allows us to look at, well, what if we don't have this middleman? What, if, what needs to be done to get around that, more or less? And it also reveals similarities of who. So if we take two major or two different entities, we have, say, a farmer, and then we have oh, maybe a major cereal producer, like General Mills, for example. The, the individual farmer might be engaged in the buying and selling of livestock or crops or buying and selling of seeds and then selling their product. They are also going to be in, involved in storage, processing, and transporting of their individual goods, whereas they might also be involved in maybe a financial aspect as well. Well, let's look at General Mills, for example. General Mills, they're going to be involved in the process of buying and selling that individual goods. They're also going to be in the process of 
storing, processing, and transporting their products. And then they might be involved in a couple of these facilitating functions as well. So as we look at the functional approach, it allows us to see these similarities of this institutional approach. Whereas this institutional approach focuses on who, we know that a lot of the a lot of times individual companies that might be from different aspects of this marketing channel often do the same functions. So it re reveals that similarities there. And then we also have the behavioral systems approach. The behavioral systems approach more or less combines the institutional and functional approach. And it allows us to look at more of a systems view of it all. It allows us to look at the interde interdependence and coordination among the marketing channel. How all this kind of flows together, how it works together as a system, is more or less the behavioral systems approach. And we often know that, for example, the producers need the processors to sell to the individual retailers to go to the consumers. And we are tied into those processors just as much as the processors are, are tied into individual farmers and ranchers, and those retailers are tied into the processors, and the consumers are tied into the retailers, and it all just kind of flows. And we're often finding that we're very dependent on the individual aspects of the marketing channel. So it shows those institutional and those functional, or, uh, the interdependence and the coordination among those different aspects of the marketing channel. It also looks at the flow of goods, more so than other ones. What about the major decisions being made by individual firms? Because that often, in a major firm decision may affect an individual producer down the line. It looks at market power and then also leadership roles of managers.